Today we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of your computer science degree while you're actually studying. One of the biggest problems that I saw when I left university and amongst my peer group as well, and I don't think this is just a my university thing, is that a lot of people are very underprepared for the workforce when they leave. They haven't done enough practical projects, they don't really know what areas of software development they actually want to get into when you've got three to four years to really figure that out and dive into things with a very low risk. This is gonna be some practical tips around how to explore as a software developer while you're at university, maybe even make some money in the process. Let's get into it. In order to get the most out of your time at university, you're either probably living in a dorm or you're living rent-free at home. You don't really have too much financial commitment apart from, you know, the university bills. This is the best time to go through and try a whole bunch of different stuff. You can go and build iOS applications, web applications, you can make a game, you can basically do whatever you want because you do have the time to do so. A lot of people that I've seen at university, myself included, we didn't do enough practical projects. You focus mainly on passing your grades and getting A's, getting B's, sometimes C's. That's your primary focus, it's to pass your courses. And while that is super important, at the end of the day, when an employer is looking at you as to whether or not to hire you, it's gonna be your side projects and everything else that really kind of sets you apart from the crowd. Really, for those people who are not kind of going to the FANG, uh, fang, fang territories, you're going to be setting yourself apart with personal projects, stuff that you build on the side, and it's a very important phase in terms of exploration, figuring out kind of what area of software development you want to get into. A lot of people seem to default to web development, and you know, while that is cool, there are a ton of different jobs out there for web development, it's just seemed to be what a lot of people fall into because it's easy, but there are so many other different areas of computer science that you can look at. You can build iOS apps, you can get into Android development, game programming, you can go into embedded programming, you can go into software as a service solutions, you can do full stack web, you know, if that appeals to you. There are a lot of different avenues that you can do, and while you're studying at university, this is the best time to go and explore those options. There are a number of reasons for this. First of all is internships. One of the things that's gonna set you apart is those projects. If you can build something that's an exploration piece, so something like an iOS app because you're curious about iOS and you build that and you take your learnings from it and you may be able to monetize it if it does quite well. You can then take that application and you can show that to a potential internship opportunity and be like, hey, I built this. They'll see that you've gone and shipped something, you've built something, you've either worked together as a team with somebody else to do it and they may hire you. And the same thing applies to when you're going for a graduate role as well. If you've got apps in the app store or you've got websites deployed, ready to go that they can go through and look through and see kind of like the quality of the work that you produce or at least that you've built several different things. That's gonna help you a lot uh, in terms of getting a job. Building things in your spare time while you're studying is a hugely wise investment of your time because it has a number of different flow and effects that'll only snowball and yield you greater and greater results. So some practical tips just to kind of get you started. You can go and build an iOS app or an Android app. That's uh, tons of tutorials out there, you can go and do that. One of the most common things is web projects. So if you've got friends or family or you know local businesses that need a website, you can go out and do that. And you can make a bit of money as well. If you build up your skills, then you can actually start charging a decent amount of money just as a side business. So in, instead of going working at the grocery store or wherever else, you can actually be building up those web development skills and those programming skills while also making money, which will also benefit you at uni because you'll be able to understand the code better. And it's just got a number of different flow and effects. So really, I would very much encourage you to start building building stuff now so you can start charging for it and it'll also benefit your university. It'll benefit you when you apply for internships and later on a graduate role. So it's a win, 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 win situation. The other thing you can do as well is start a YouTube channel. Uh, uh, if you make it more tutorial focused, so you're teaching people programming aspects, how to do technological things, technological, that'll have a number of benefits as well. And the fact that it'll teach you a number of different skills apart from development, you'll learn how to make a video, you'll learn SEO, you'll learn how to make, you know, clickable titles. You'll learn a ton of different stuff starting a YouTube channel, some of which may be relevant for, you know, future internships. Others is just gonna be, you know, good personal skills. Uh, you'll learn a little bit of marketing, you'll learn Photoshop and content creation and all the lovely stuff that comes with that. But the big thing is, is that you'll be teaching people and that's something that's very, very valuable to a lot of companies. If you can explain complex technical topics in a simple way, 
that shows you have a really good grasp and a fundamental knowledge of the topic you're talking about. And that's really valuable for employers to see. Considering the uh, CPM for software development channels as well, you may even make a little bit of money while you're doing it. So obviously don't go into this for the money, go into it with the aim of helping people and communicating and improving those skills, but some small side benefits are also good. So let's say you've taken this advice, you've gone and you've built a couple of iOS apps, you've built a couple of websites for people, you've maybe started a YouTube channel, well, what then? Internships, they're quite important when you go for a graduate role, but I honestly don't think that you need an internship in order to get a graduate role somewhere. Obviously it helps if you've got experience working within teams, uh, commercial applications, that is all super valuable. But I think that if you've got a solid enough portfolio of previous work that you've gone and developed and deployed yourself, then that's not really going to be too much of a stickler for you in terms of applying for graduate roles. But going for an internship, I think is a very good idea for anyone. When you've got your little portfolio of apps, you've maybe got a website, you've created it with Squarespace or Wix, and I'm not sponsored by Squarespace. This is not like a part of a brand integration where you're gonna get, this is sponsored by Squarespace. No, I'm not big enough for that yet. So go check out Squarespace, Wix, Webflow, any of those kind of website builders if you're pushed for time. Otherwise you can build it in React or whatever web framework is popular at the moment. And uh, yeah, you can create a little portfolio site for yourself and it'll show internships that you can deploy something. You've got a whole variety of stuff. I think you'll be in a very good shape compared to your the rest of your peers to get an internship. When it comes to graduate roles as well, the same advice basically applies is that you need a portfolio of stuff in order to show that you can do the job. If you think about it more like this, if say for example, you're getting married somewhere in the future, and you're hiring a photographer, you're going to go for someone who's got an established body of work that you can see their style, you can see that they're consistent and you'll hire that person as opposed to person B, which has just finished a photography degree and only knows the theory. They've never picked up a camera before in their lives. So when you think about it like that, you really need to show that you can do the job before you get the job. And for a lot of people, that's not the case. They go through university, they go through computer science, they're very good with their data structure and algorithms. They've learned about web technologies, but they've never picked up a web framework. They haven't really touched JavaScript. They've never deployed anything. It's a whole lot of learning that you just won't get unless you actually do it yourselves. And I think that's kind of where the university system falls down quite a bit, is that they don't teach enough practical knowledge, or if that's not part of the curriculum, they don't encourage it enough. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do here is encourage you to go and build things, to break things, to try a lot of different things so you don't just fall into a web job. You realize it's a big wide world out there when it comes to programming and there's a lot of different opportunities that you can take. There you go. One other tip that uh, may be very useful, in fact, not maybe useful, is very useful, is networking. Computer programmers get a bad rap for not being the most sociable of folk. And funnily enough, the most sociable, outgoing, extroverted people I've ever met in my life have been through computer science. They've been top tier, grade A people. So when you're networking, there's a couple of different benefits to this, obviously. The first one being is that the peer group that you go through are going to be the ones who are gonna be getting jobs when you graduate, and they're gonna be at all sorts of different companies. You never know where somebody's gonna end up. The value that you can provide for people and the value that they can provide for you is referrals. And you know, talking to people, be like, oh, I really want to work for that company. I know a friend of a friend who works there, I can put you in touch. It's really good having that network and especially as that grows as you get older, people work at different companies, they can put you in touch with different people. It's super valuable. As well as that, increasing your communication skills, being friendly with people, it's, it's just, it's a win-win basically. As well as the career aspect of it, you may actually just find people you enjoy hanging out with and you may end up building stuff together. You may go and build an app that may generate some money and you start a little side business together and hey presto, you don't need to get a job because you already have one. You made your own. Th the main takeaways from this is don't just coast and rest on your laurels when you're doing a computer science degree. Please do go out and try a ton of different stuff. I wish I had done more of this. I wish I'd dabbled in Unity programming. I wish I'd done some app development. I wish I'd touched web because I would never do that again. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things I wish I'd done differently. Go through, try as many different things as possible. Network, be friendly, try and make as large a peer group as possible. Meet some friends you can work and do assignments with because, you know, like some of my favorite university memories were working with my friends on assignments and going and getting lunch at the terrible Chinese place down the road because it was cheap and nasty, but it was so good. And all of this stuff will put you in 
are much better stead for getting an internship, getting a job, or having a much more informed opinion as to what area of development you want to get into later on in life. So that'll be it from me, guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.